<clears throat> I um, had been wanting to do this for a long time, just kind of talking my way through um, the way that I um, get used to uh, playing, you know, get used to thinking through changes over a new tune uh, over the fingerboard. And um, it's taken me a long time just to get to the point where I can actually do this. It's so hard, in my opinion, um, which is why uh, to be a, um, a decent jazz player who can play over the sophisticated harmonies that go on in a lot of tunes, you have to be able to, you have to be able to think through this stuff. You can't just guess and hunt and peck on stuff. So, in my opinion, at least I can't and never will be able to. Um, the tune I wanted to use to illustrate this is a tune called Stella by Starlight, uh, which is a jazz standard which a bazillion people know, except for I haven't for the longest time, so I'm purposefully picking a tune that's difficult for me, that is non-traditional in the changes, and that is uh, something I'm just starting to really get my head wrapped around. Um, this tune is super cool. I love it. The melody is just absolutely beautiful, uh, and the changes are absolutely beautiful. Written by a guy named Victor Young, I think, for a movie in 1944, I think, called The Uninvited with Ray Moland and Gail Russell before she took a downward turn. Uh, such a talented young lady. She was Stella in the movie, Stella Meredith, and this was a song written for her by Ray Milland, who's a composer, where, and he and his sister bought a cliffside mansion, which was haunted. Uh, anyway, Stella by Starlight uh, first showed up in that movie. I heard it um, and had already heard the tune, of course, before then, but it really, I didn't know the history of it. I didn't know where it came from, but that's a little taste of it. All right, Stella by Starlight. I'm going to try to, first of all, just kind of play it for you, hopefully whistle. I just tried to do this a minute ago and didn't work out so well, so I apologize in advance. Uh, but um, this is kind of the way it sounds, and then I'll show you the melody, <clears throat> and I'll show you the changes, but the point of this is to show you how I, um, without, I, I, recently I heard somebody say that they feel that, you know, you should always practice your tunes up to tempo, and I'm the exact opposite of that. I feel that you, the way you get a, you get um, concrete on a tune is by actually playing it completely out of tempo, getting your fingers and your hands around all the possibilities on the fingerboard for these, um, you know, more sophisticated jazz harmonies, and then that's how you that's how you get a tune under your fingers. Um, fine, whoever disagrees with that, it just works for me. Um, so Stella by Starlight is um, it's it's an interesting tune in that it starts off with a minor two five, starts with a minor. An E minor seven flat five to A seven flat nine, and uh, you would think, wow, that's a strange couple of chords to start a tune off, but that's where the the melody lies. It's um it's beautiful. So let me just let me play it one time for you, and then you know we'll I'll try to play it for you, and then we'll break it down a little bit. Still by Starlight.
now we break it apart. <laughs> I never claimed I could sing. I never claimed I could play the banjo, but I definitely never claimed I could sing. All right, so uh, this starts off with uh, E minor seven flat five, A seven flat nine, which is a minor D minor two five. So that you would think it would go, but it doesn't. C minor, F7, F minor 7, B flat 7, E flat major 7, A flat 7, B flat major 7, E minor 7 flat 5, A 7 flat 9, D minor, ah, that time it did go to D minor. Now we're going to go E flat minor, E flat 7. So it's a little 2-5 uh, in the key. That's where you want it to go, but it doesn't. So let's start from here. Uh, beginning. Seven flat five, D seven flat nine. Okay, that's the first half. One more time. D minor seven flat five, G seven flat nine, na G uh, C minor seven flat five to F seven flat nine, na 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 to B flat, and that's where the end of the song is. So you'll notice at the end it's just turnarounds. E minor seven flat five, A seven flat nine, D minor seven flat five, G seven flat nine, C minor seven flat five, F seven flat nine. So cool, huh? Beautiful. Here's the point of the whole lesson. How do we get through a tune like that that's so not G bluegrass? You know what I mean? Or G blues or C blues or A blues or E blues or whatever. It's so... Uh, gets around so many different things. I'm not going to have time, nor do I want to go through every change in the whole thing, but I do want to show you the, the changes that are important. In particular in this tune, because there are so many minor 7 flat 5 to... to five seven flat nine the, the e minor seven flat five to the a seven flat nine there's so many changes like that that it really makes you realize gosh i gotta know i gotta know how to play minor seven flat five well if you're like me when you run up against that chord you kind of go mm, what do i do there well if you're a theory buff like i am you realize that in the in this particular set of changes e minor seven flat five to a seven flat nine the e minor seven flat five is very simply 
uh, a C7 chord. I mean, it, it's like it's a, it's extend it's the extension of a C7. Um, the if you think let's go back to the key of G for a second. If you think of a D7, well, if you go D, well, that's your F sharp and F sharp. F sharp minor seven flat five is the extension of a D7 chord. Well, in this case, E minor seven flat five is the extension of a C7 chord. So the types of things that you'll play over that will be very closely related, just like you can extend a C7 chord with an E minor seven flat five, you can also play things related to a C7 chord for an E minor seven flat five. And it goes the same for the A minor seven flat five. That would be, what would the A minor seven flat five be? The, the uh, the likely five chord would be E minor seven flat five is an extension of F, right? F seven. Right. And D minor seven flat five. So um, let's, uh, th the thing that I want to show here, we're 12 minutes into it already, is basically how I will play through the chords of the song with no rhyme or reason to uh, time, but just try to cover the fingerboard over the changes and try to li literally see them while I'm playing them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call out the changes. I'll just do, let's just do the first few. And da da E flat minor seven to A flat uh, A seven flat nine do da ba A, A C minor to F seven. Let's just go that far. So E, I'll just kind of play this. And these are all, you know, I'll, actually the minor seven flat five. I'll show it, but also I'm going to explain that it's very closely related to the C seven. You'll notice that this is. It's a dominant uh, a pentatonic. What I think it's called the Col Coltrane pentatonic. It's basically just a C7 pentatonic instead of C, C regular. It's. Well, that's your E minor 7 flat 5. Same thing here. It's got a different note in it there, but I'm not going to explain that right now. See the C7? I'm just going to get rid of the C. And then E minor flat 5 7. So here, I mean, again, I'm just showing you that one set of minor 7 flat 5 so you can apply that to all the rest of them. That would be Here's, here's my here's my E right right E E E a little quick one is you can just take E minor and flatten five. That's a nice little quick and easy one that you can do. I'll use it a million times in this song. Okay, back, here we are. E minor 7 flat 5. A7 flat 9, which we all know is B flat diminish. C minor. So there's your first four chords. E minor seven flat five, uh, whatever, wherever, wherever you're playing. A seven flat nine. 
C minor. F. So that's how I get through that, and I see it all over the fingerboard. That way I can play it here, 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 and get through those. Now let's, let's cover a few more bars of this. Next chord is F minor. B flat. Alt it if you want to. E major 7 to A flat 7. Okay, so let's do those. F minor. here. Let's just stick with the B flat 7. B flat 7 to E uh, flat major 7. To A flat 7. So, once again, I've, I've acclimated myself over those first few changes to kind of get through that deal. Uh, the next changes are B flat 7. D minor. B flat minor to E flat 7. E flat minor sub flat E minor sub flat five to A flat seven flat nine. Um, then to two five in G minor, which is A minor sub flat five to D seven flat nine. Five. A lot of you again will go. What? The hell? When am I? It's just, it's just a G whole tone scale, F whole tone scale, G whole tone scale, A whole tone scale, B whole tone scale, C sharp whole tone scale. Uh, C minor. A seven. A flat seven. B flat major seven. Now we're on this very last line. I guess I did go through all the things, huh? E flat, uh, E minor seven flat five. To A, to A seven flat nine. Now let's just do a real simple D. So that, see how quick, quickly that turns around at the end. So anyway, 20 minutes of that, but it should, uh, I'm just showing you how, that's how I work through improvisational ideas on a new jazz tune that I'm learning. Um, it really helps me. I have to do this for quite a while before I start getting it under my fingers. Another one I've been doing recently is Blues That Beautiful Tune. I, I'm going to share this really quick, so bonus. Uh, you may have heard this, uh, Toots Thielman, 
Thielmans? Thielman. Uh, harmonica player, guitar player, 40s and 50s, uh, blues out. Just, it's a cool tune. It's not long or anything, it just keeps going around and around. It's in B flat. <laughs> That's how it works. Well, he, this is another one that I'm completely unfamiliar with, but I've started this whole kind of practice of doing it. I'm a little ahead of still by Starlight, maybe. But I'll just play through the changes. One, two, three, two, two, three. Uh, <laughs> two, three, one, two, three. Can, uh, you can kind of hear the changes <laughs> if I could play them right. But I do this over and over and over again, and then I kind of do it rubato, not to time, and then I slowly start working it into a time frame. Then I slowly start playing it with tracks. Then hopefully I'm playing it with other people along the way so I can really kind of, you know, botch it a couple hundred thousand times so that I can eventually learn how to play uh, decent improvisational ideas. Okay, well. I don't know if that was a success or not, but I hope I hope it helps somebody. Goodbye. <laughs>